Good morning and welcome to the Cleveland Worship Center. Are you guys doing okay this morning? Yes, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning with you guys. We're ready to worship, ready to see what God is going to do today. But first, me and my wife, Tara, we're up here. Uh, we want to let you know a little bit more about August 23rd, starting at 7 p.m., going to 10 p.m. It's a Friday night. Our marriage conference, guys, let me tell you something, is going to be amazing. You guys do not want to miss out. If you've not signed up yet and you're thinking about it on the fence, kind of, should we do it or should we not, let me tell you something. I believe that God will bless you if you will take some time out of your schedule, get some babysitters, if you've got babies, and come to this event. Man, this thing's being prayed over. People are really studying about how to how to interact with you guys a little bit better in the in the marriage concept of things. So listen, there's been a lot of preparation for you guys, all you married couples. Those, those of you that think you're about to get married, come, sign up. See what God has in store for your relationship. Somebody say amen. But Friday night, the main session, date night options. There's going to be cornhole, some other things going on so that you and your loved one can have a good night that night. And then Saturday, we come back in. We're going to have an amazing brunch, uh, a bunch of breakout sessions. A couple of the uh, breakout sessions include uh, intimacy in marriage, biblical parenting, and empty nesting. I know for my parents, they need that one. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing, but it, it's for those that the kids are already out of the house. If you're feeling, you know, kind of in that area, there's a lot of things going on this weekend. You do not want to miss this weekend. So to sign up, you just go to the Cleveland, the CWConline.org, and go to the events tab and click on the B1 Marriage, and you sign up. All right. Are y'all ready for the marriage conference? So if you've not signed up yet, sign up. Listen, will everybody stand up with us? Let's get ready to worship in this place. We're wanting to see what God's going to do this morning. Can we all just lift our hands up to God? Lord, we love you, Jesus. We thank you for this morning. I thank you for what you're going to do this morning. God, I come expecting great things because I know you can do it. God, I know we're going to sense your presence in this place. And God, we're going to give you all the honor and all of the glory for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen came ready today, amen? Excited to be in the house of the Lord. We're going to lean in for what God has for us this morning. We're going to lift the name of the Lord up, amen. Come on, let's sing. We need no other hiding place. I hope it's safe within your name. This we know, this we know, you promise never to forsake, what you begin will sustain, this we know, this we know. Yeah. 
Come on, let's sing this out tonight. Jesus' name will break every stronghold. Freedom is ours when we call His name. Come on, stay. Hallelujah In the 
Amen. I hope that you've come into this place with that kind of cry on your heart that He is alive and that is why we're able to assemble together today. I am so honored to be a part of this service this morning. If you've been a part of the, this week and camp meeting and everything that God has been doing, I'm going to tell you, I, God has just turned my switch. And it is on fire. I tell you, I am just so thankful for what God is doing. And I don't take for granted the ability to be able to raise my hands in worship free. Let him know that God has set me free. He has healed my mind. He has healed my body. He has set me free so that I'm not unhindered. And I can praise him with everything within me. And if you're not able to do that today, then it is our prayer that by the time we leave this place today, that you are going to receive a touch from, the, from Almighty God. You're going to leave this place changed in Jesus' name. And so the next time you come back, you're going to be able to sing with everything within you that He is alive and He is well. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated if you can. It is so great to be here today in a part of this 9 a.m. service. I always say that the real Christians come to the 9 a.m. service. So we thank you uh, for being here. Uh, this is a big week for us as uh, our school systems here locally will be going back to school on Thursday. And so this morning we want to, uh, we want to pray o over all the students. We want to pray over all our college students, our teachers, and our administration. Uh, if you are a part of anything to do with education and the educational process, we want to ask if you would come and join with our kids uh, today as we are going to pray and pray God's anointing upon them. And so, kids, I want to ask if y'all would stand. We're going to do this for both services, but if y'all would just stand up. Now, I want to ask if you serve within our kids' ministry here at our church. This is kind of our launch for the, for the fall of 2019. This is a very, very important time for us. So if you are a teacher within our kids' ministry here at the church, you volunteer within our kids' ministry at church, you're a teacher at school, you're a parapro, if you are a part of the educational system, we want to ask if you will come as well and join with our kids here in the altar area. If y'all will come, please, real quick. Real quick, we're going to pray over you as well. This is a very, very important, important part. That we still live in a community where Jesus is still Lord and that He can still be proclaimed. And I realize that we are limited on some of the things we can do to express our faith within our community, within our public school systems. But I believe that God is placing key leaders that they're able to, to live a lot even without saying the name of Jesus people can see that Jesus is alive within them and so we're going to pray for all of you as well so I want to ask if everyone in the house would you stand with me would you stretch your hands this way and I want to ask Pastor Ryan and Tara I want to ask if you guys would come and I want you to lead uh, this prayer uh, Pastor Ryan and Tara are our family pastors and I think that this is why God has called you to pray and equip these leaders and these students for this for this season going into this new school year. Amen, amen. Before we start, I want to, last year we got to meet with some of the uh, counselors and stuff in the school, and they were very well aware of what was going on in the school, and they all agreed that a spiritual attack was against our school system. I don't know about you, but in this prayer, I want us to claim that God is going to be in our school systems more this year than ever before. We're equipping these guys to go into their schools and to be not hidden, to be light in the community and in that school. Amen. So listen, I want you to pray with me. I want you to agree with me that God is going to be the center of White County school systems. God is going to be the center of Hall County school systems. God is going to be the center of Habersham and all the, the counties that, that are represented in this place this morning. Amen. Can we stretch out our hands this morning to the kids this morning? God, I thank you, Lord, for today. I thank you, Lord, that this is a the beginning this week of a new school year. God, I am claiming it right now, God, that you there's going to be a revival that is going to start in our school system. Yes, I said it, in the schools. God, we're going to see people come to know you through, through the students standing up for who they are in Christ this year. God, we will not back down to the devil. We will stand up victorious knowing that God is in our schools. God, I pray right now, Lord, that you would touch every single student, God, that is, that is represented in here today, God, from elementary, God, to, 
to, to um, middle school, God, to high school, God, on into college. God, I pray right now a special protection over these guys. God, I pray, Lord, that there would be no hindrances, God, in their minds and in their hearts, God. I pray, Lord, that you would keep them safe as they go to school, God. Anything that would try to attack them, God, spiritually, physically, mentally, God, health-wise, God, I pray that it would be ceased in the name of Jesus. God, I'm believing that this is going to be a different school year. I'm believing, God, for revival to come to our schools. I'm believing for things to happen, God, and it's going to come through your name. And I believe it's going to come through this youth here today, God, in this community, God, that they're going to stand up this year and lift your name up high. God, I pray for every single student, God, that you would put a special blessing on them, God, as they go this year. God, have their minds ready. I pray over every single worker, God, from teacher to custodian to lunchroom, uh, God, from the office, God, to the administrators, to every single area of the school system. God, if there's any teach, I pray right now, God, that you would bless them, God, Lord, with a, a, an anointing to teach not only the, the curriculum that has to be teached, but God spreads your love. Don't even have to say your name, but the students can feel you because you're living inside of us. And God, I pray over every single administrator in this in, that, that, that's represented, God, in our school systems, God, that you would touch them, God. I thank you, Lord, that they're sensing, God, that they're spiritual battles. And I'm, I'm telling you, devil, right now, you have no authority in our schools. You have none whatsoever. Our God has the power. He has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And devil, you have lost over our students. We are claiming Jesus in our school systems this year. I'm believing it in the name of Jesus that revival is going to hit our schools. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Lord, for college. Bless those, God. Bless the teachers, the professors. God, I'm asking you, Lord, that this would be a year, God, where there's, there's no hindrances. God, where there's no attacks against our children in every aspect. And I pray a special blessing over every single school. God bless this year. It's going to be a defining year. And I ask you, Lord, that it would start in our students. Let us be a light in our community the name of Jesus. God, we do humbly pray. Amen and amen. Thank you guys so much. If you will, you can find your seats. Kids, thank you so much for coming in. You can go back to your service. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you for coming and taking time out of your class, class this morning to be with us. Uh, listen, this is, this is important. Our children and our youth is the most important thing to this ministry because we believe that this is where revival starts is right there with, with, the, with them and regardless whether you are going to a university or college or technical college whatever you're going what you're a part of we pray God's blessings upon you that he's going to open your mind he's going to enrich your heart that you are going to be a sharp instrument in the hand of God we believe that and we're going to continue to pray for our young people and all those who are part of uh, the administration and different areas of education. I also want to mention, I don't want to embarrass him, um, he's uh, serving as an usher this morning, but John Luna, um, one of our ministers here, uh, he and Kelsey, they're over our 20 and 30s ministry. John has uh, been serving over the last year in a position uh, with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. He is a, a life coach they're in our school system that God has opened up a door so that we can invest into the coaches, into our teachers, and into our athletes uh, about what faith is and who Jesus is. And what an opportunity that God has afforded uh, John Luna to be a part of this ministry of FCA and for him to be a part of our ministry as well. So I want to put a challenge out to you as, as my church family. I want to encourage you to pray about John is a local missionary in our school system. And everything that he does, what he, what, what he, uh, how he is able to do what he's able to do is because of people of faith who support that ministry. He is 100% solely dependent upon the support of Christians in our community. 
So I want you to pray that above your tithe, I'm talking about an offering to God. Maybe it's a commitment that you make for a month. Maybe it's something six months or even this entire school year. Would you pray about planting a seed into the Fellowship of Christian Athletes uh, and support that ministry through FCA? You can do that. You can give. Put a designate on your on your check or your envelope. If you're online giving, you can put FCA, and 100% of those proceeds will go to support that ministry. So I want you to pray about that. That is a personal challenge that I ask you as my church family to pray about. I want to ask if the ushers would go ahead and come. We're going to receive this morning's tithe and offerings. I just want to say thank you on behalf of the Cleveland Worship Center and the community of White County. We were able to partner with several churches, businesses, organizations that yesterday that we were able to give away $3,000 worth of free school supplies to our community. Now that's, that's worthy of a hand clap of praise. We thank God for, for being able to do what we were able to do. I believe it was the most successful back to school bash that we have ever, ever had. And we were able to touch a lot of people, a lot of families who were struggling with the love and the generosity of Jesus. And uh, I just want to say thank you for your generosity for giving to that outreach. We do this every single year. And so with not only what God has blessed the Cleveland Worship Center, but through many other churches, we all work together and to reach out into our community. How many of y'all know that we can do infinitely more together than apart? Listen, we're, go we're all going to be in heaven together someday. It doesn't matter what your background, it doesn't matter what your church affiliation is or what denomination you may come from. We're all as Christians. Jesus Christ is our foundation and we're reaching people together. And as people are reached and as people are changed and saved under the, under the power of the salvation grace of Jesus Christ, that is where the church grows. Not just our church, but the community grows. And when the community grows in faith, then this community is changed. And then our community can change this state. And as this state can change this nation, this nation can change the world. You see, it all starts right here, being faithful in the small things. And I want to say thank you for your giving this morning. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to give. Lord, to, to acknowledge that you are the one who gives to us first. I thank you for favor. I thank you for the means that we are able to reach out into this great community. God, I thank you what you're doing in the Cleveland Worship Center. But I thank you, Lord, what you're doing in all the churches in this community. God, I see it. I see there's a, there's a heart to work together and be together. And, and, and no longer have these, these inconsequential divisions uh, driving us apart. That we're all driven together in the saving grace of Jesus. Lord, I pray your blessings over this, this tithe and this offering now. Lord, the 10% is yours. But Lord, for those who are challenged to go above and beyond the offering, God, I pray you would bless them all. And Lord, that we would continue to lead in, lean into you for all things. For our finances, for our health, for our relationships, for everything. We are trusting you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. so much to be thankful for I thank God that Wayne Lovell one of our very own God has brought him safe back home from Afghanistan he is he's in the states he came home this weekend he's going to go back uh, to the base and, and you know go through that download process that uh, all soldiers need to do so we praise God uh, to hear that Wayne is back home and safe and uh, we just thank him for for, for just moving in through a very, very difficult situation. Um, as we know that we've got many of our soldiers who are still, you know, over overseas, serving in areas that honestly I don't think that they would want to be in, but God's going to use them. And it, it's for the benefit of this great nation to keep us free. So let's continue to lift up and pray for, for all of our soldiers. Uh, also want to make mention just a few things that we've got going on, a lot, lot of
of great things. If you're here today and you're visiting with us for the first time, I want to ask if you would please grab a Connect card, which is located in the chair in front of you. Fill that out and present it to our welcome booth right after service where, where we have someone who's going to be there and they're going to present to you a very special gift uh, that we just want to say thank you. That is how we connect with people. That is how that we grow and we're able to uh, kind of connect you with what the details and what's going on behind the scenes of the church. Uh, so please, uh, we don't share that information with other, other organizations. That is strictly for uh, the Cleveland Worship Center and family. I also want to make mention that tonight is our family first. Uh, which we're going to have couples ministry in the pavilion. We're going to have a special youth service here in the auditorium. And we will have child care available. All of that starts at 6 p.m. And if you have any questions about that, you can see David and Shanda Murphy um, immediately following service. I think they're going to be out in the foyer also uh, available to answer any questions about the B1 Marriage Conference as well. Also, our kids ministry, our Summit Kids Ministry will be uh, hosting a barbecue fundraiser. Uh, those tickets are available starting today, and we're needing those to go out. We're needing you to promote this for us. This is kind of our big fundraiser for the year for our kids ministry so that we can do some more things with our kids and be able to improve uh, their worship experience of what they have every single service and on Wednesday nights and other areas. And so you can see Miss Valerie Johnson in the foyer as well. Maybe you can pick up a bag of 10 tickets and, and, uh, and sell those. Uh, parents, they'll also have those available in the kids' ministry as you leave uh, today. Um, I think that the date for the barbecue is that weekend of September the 28th, uh, but all the tickets are due by the 15th so that we can be sure that we are purchasing the right amount of food and so forth. And if you've never had barbecue made by Tim Malden, then you are missing out. I promise you it is as good as you're ever going to eat. And, you know, we eat a lot around here, don't we? We eat a lot. You can't have, you can't have a function unless you eat. You just can't do it. Uh, so I know some of you, you've been praying about, you know, hey, I want to join. I want to lock, lock arms with this ministry. If you're interested in becoming a member of the Cleveland Worship Center, um, next Sunday after the second service we're going to host an uh, orientation class for the Cleveland Worship Center and so we ask if you're interested in joining in, you know, even if you can't attend this class please go on our website go into the events tab and register uh, to become a member we're going to do that on August the 18th uh, I think it's going to be a great, great weekend. We've got many of you who, who you want to be more than just, uh, than just a consumer. You want to contribute to what God is doing here at the Cleveland Worship Center. Now, I know that there's probably a whole lot more announcements that I intended to share, probably some very important things that need to be shared, uh, but you can look on your bulletin. You can go on our website and find that information out. Uh, I mentioned about uh, John Luna uh, working with the FCA ministry. John's going to be ministering here from behind the pulpit on Wednesday night, and so I want to encourage you, if you've if you've never heard uh, Pastor John preach or share the word, I want you to come and, and support him on this night. God is just growing in this young man, and I'm so proud uh, to, to call him my friend and to see him grow up within this ministry. And just he's becoming the man of God that, that God so desires for him to be. Now, is that enough announcements for this morning? Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 It was hard for me as it was for you. This morning I want to share a message with you that was birthed from an idea from a message that I preached several, several weeks ago. Uh, it was, I think, June 23rd, somewhere around that date. I shared a message with you entitled Fast Lane. And it was one of those kind of messages that, uh, you know, really addressed the fact of where so many of us are today. That many of us, that we are living life in the fast lane, that we are, we are hammered down in everything that we do, that we're honestly, we're, we're out of balance and we're out of control. And I've never had a message that, and had so many people respond in conversation and emails and in text of how that, that message really kind of hit home. But there was a question that kind of kept uh, coming from that message that I didn't really have time to address on that weekend. It was our weekend that we celebrated our VBS. It was our VBS finale. So I only had like 20 minutes to really even to, to deliver any form of message. And so it was kind of an overview. We were kind of talking about it 30,000 feet above the earth in this conversation. And there were many of you that, that you were moved, that you were challenged. And I believe that you left here knowing that God's calling you to do something different. 
But many of you asked the question that next week and said, you know what, I need more. There's got to be more application. There's got to be more of how to, how to get out of the fast lane. How do we live a life that is honoring, that we live a life that is at a pace that honors and is honoring to the Lord? And so this morning, however it is, if you have a mobile device, if you have a Bible, I want to ask that you go ahead and turn with me to Luke chapter 10 this morning. And as you're turning there, I want to open up by asking a few audience participation questions. Now, these are, are, are a little bit, they're, they're, they're not too far, too far on the edge. But if you don't participate, then this is not going to be effective in any way. There's really nothing funny about any of the questions I'm going to ask. So I want to ask that you dig in. I'm asking that you would be honest this morning. But how many of you, by a showing of hands, would say that you are occasionally or often that you're stressed out? That you're stressed out. I know for some of you, if you're like me, school is starting Thursday. It just seemed like our kids just got out of school last week. And so we've got all of these things. I mean, we as a family, we thought we had the rat race during the summer. Oh, it's about, it's going to be game on come Thursday morning. All changes when school gets back in as we kind of just drive that thing as hard as we possibly can possibly can and so with that there comes stress and I don't know about you I already feel it in the top of my neck down into my shoulders you know what that's called stress a lot of us were overstressed already and school hasn't even started number two how many of you would raise your hands and say that you were often or occasionally stressed financially that financially listen there, there, there's no no wrong answer here but listen, you know, we're, we're at that point that we've got all of these things kind of going on. If you've got kids, you've got maybe one going into the marching band, and they're like, oh, i got to have a trombone, and that thing costs like $3,000. Your kids have to have braces, a transmission in your car is about to go out, and, you know, there's all of this tension, there's all of this stress that often revolves around finances. Third question is this. How many of you wish that you had more time for yourself now I'm not talking about being selfish here I'm talking about that there are things that, that you wish that you could do that mattered more you know things that maybe you would spend more time with your family most of all maybe you would spend more time talking with God reading God's word but yet we're, we're often we, we fall for smaller things or things that may be good and we miss the best things that God has for us you see, at some point or another, each and every one of us, even if you raise your hand or not, we're all affected by this thing called stress. We all see it. We all experience it, no matter what place in, uh, that you may be within life. And so you know what I'm talking about here. We're talking about pushing the limits. We're talking about hammer down, living life in the fast lane. So what do we do? We buy into the lie that, that we buy more, that we have more, that we conquer more, that we achieve more. We have all of these goals that are out there that often drive us, and it's a very, very dangerous place. Many of us, we're living life that we're, we're out of balance, that we cannot continue, we cannot sustain the pace that we're living because at some point, you're going to break. And what's insane? This is what people call normal. This is what people call normal. For example, again, we've got our kids. They're going back to school this week. And it doesn't matter whether you're a college student or you're in 12th grade or you're in kindergarten. It's going to be homework every night. Listen, my kids, Maylee is going into the sixth grade, and she had some math issues last year. The things that she is learning is things that I learned when I was in college. And I didn't do very well in college. So the struggle is real, and I'm like, oh, man, every night. Here it comes. It's just coming. Your child's probably going to be involved in at least one or more extracurricular activity. We're talking about three, five nights a week. You're coming up that, that your menu is going to consist of chicken nuggets, french fry, and a Coke, eating in your car at least five nights a week. It's coming. Quality, quality time with your kids. They're kicking and screaming. They're tired. They've been at school all day, but yet we just keep doing all of these things. You know what we call this? Normal. Normal. So as adults, what do we do? We try to keep up, keep up with our schedules. It's pedal to the metal. We're stressed to the max. And I think if we were all honest with each other, even if somebody come up to you and ask the question, 
are you enjoying life? I mean, are you really? Is it just awesome? You know how most of you are going to respond? You're not even going to answer them. You're just going to say, hey, look, I'm really busy. I'd like to have this conversation, but I'm late somewhere. I've got to be. It's just kind of, you know, one ear and out the other. Listen, we're living life in the fast lane. And most of it's due because we're not living within the margin that God wants us to live in. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Margin, what does that mean? What, what, what is margin? What are you talking about? Margin is the amount available beyond what is necessary. I think a better definition is this, if you're a note taker, that margin is the difference between what you have and what you need. For example, if you are supposed to be somewhere in 30 minutes and it takes you 20 minutes to get there, what you have is 10 minutes of margin. If you have $100, but yet you've got $80 worth of bills on the table, you've got $20 worth of margin. Now listen, I don't know, your margin is going to look much different than what my margin is. Margin for you could be that you're going to choose to start going and, and leaving and getting somewhere five minutes or ten minutes early at a meeting because you don't want to be frustrated. You don't want to be stressed out. Financially, for you, from a margin perspective, it could be that you got money at the end of the month that you used to not have. Margin is the distance between you and temptation. In other words, what I'm talking about here is a moral standard that God helps you develop and put up guardrails in your life so that you don't veer off the main road. You see, guardrails are placed there for purposes so that if you do run off the road, it'll keep you safe. It'll keep you on the road rather than running off and falling into destructive behavior or a very dangerous kind of place. Margin could be having the emotional capacity to handle any, any situation. That when you face a hardship or a tribulation, something bad happens, your child comes and they throw something on the table that is very challenging. Rather than responding because you know, you're always overwhelmed, you don't, you don't lash out at them, now if you live with a, with a margin of emotion, then you're able to process, you're able to respond in a godly way and kind of work through your struggles. Margin could be that you intentionally, that you say, look, two or three nights a week. Mark it down. We are scheduling it. We're going to be home as a family two to three nights a week. And listen, I know that that's a big challenge, but this is where we need to go. Margin could be that maybe that you take some of your extra time or maybe some of your extra monies and you invest in a, in a ministry, an outreach ministry that is supporting and benefiting our community. Margin could be simply having time to think, reflect, Dream. I'm wondering, when is the last time you dreamed about something ahead of you? I'm talking about developing vision, having something that means something. When's the last time that you looked forward to something? Margin for you could be you spend five minutes with your spouse just in conversation. But most of all, margin for you may mean that you need to spend more time talking with God and reading His Word. Simply put is this, margin is what most of us don't have because we are constantly living life in the fast lane. But I believe today, in however long God may have us in the vein of this conversation, God is going to teach us through His Word how to live with margin so that we can live a life that is honoring to Him, so that we can avoid living life on the red line in the danger zone where we're always overwhelmed. Now, I want to use a passage of Scripture that I have preached on several times before. But I want us to look at it maybe from a different perspective today. I want to talk about that there's two women that we're going to discuss. One of the women, she was caught up in the fast lane. In other words, she was living life with absolutely no margin whatsoever. The other woman created margin, and she experienced something that could not be taken away from her. So I want you to read this with me. Luke chapter 10, we're going to start with verse number 38. Scripture says, Now it happened as they went that Jesus entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed Jesus into her house. She had a sister named Mary who also sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his word. 
But Martha was distracted with much serving. Martha was distracted by much serving. Now, what's interesting about this story is that both of these women were given the exact same opportunity. You see, Jesus was invited to come into the home of Mary and Martha. And I'm sure for Mary, there was probably a lot of things that she could have been doing. I'm sure that she probably could have noticed that, you know, there's, there's clothes all over the floor. Some washing needs to be done. So, you know, she should be doing something with, with taking care of all the dirty clothes. Maybe she saw that the pantry was empty and that she had the opportunity maybe to go to the grocery store, fill the pantry up where they would have some food. Maybe she looked into the bathroom and the, 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 the sink needed to be wiped down or maybe toilet paper needed to be put on the roll. But, but Mary didn't do any of these things. She chose to embrace the moment and who she had the moment with. And that was she was in the presence of Jesus Christ. Now her sister, on the other hand, Martha, she responds like so many of us. No, wait a minute, I shouldn't talk about you. Martha responds how I often respond. Maybe that's what I should say. She was overwhelmed by the moment. And she saw all of these things that she thought that she needed to do. And what's interesting to me is that what she was distracted by, it wasn't bad. There was nothing evil involved here. There wasn't no sin involved in this story, but she was distracted by what I will call some good things. There were some good things that had her, had her mind. In fact, the reality is, there are many of us, we are distracted by the same things. Now think about, think about Martha here. Think about what she would have been thinking. Here she's got this guy by the name of Jesus who word has already come. There's a stir going on. People are saying, wait a minute, there's something different about this guy by the name of Jesus. Could he be the Savior of the world? Could he be the one that's coming to, to save all, all the people from their sins? Could he be? And so in her mind, I'm sure she was like, wait a minute, this is an important day. You know, I want to honor this guy. I want to at its very best and honor this visit. So listen, it wasn't that what she was thinking was wrong, but she was distracted by some good things that caused her to miss out on the best thing. Now somebody needs to listen up here. Now I can't take credit for this next statement that I'm about to make. But if Satan, our spiritual enemy, if he can't make us bad, you know what he'll do? He'll make us busy. I heard it said one time that if the devil can't get you to take your foot off the gas, he'll put a brick on top of your foot so that you're hammered down so you run out of the road and you crash and burn. That, that he wants to take us out in any way that we can. You see, there are many of us that, that we are busy doing lesser things when there is something even better that is before us. That we do things that, that at the moment we think are good things, that there's nothing wrong with those things, but it causes us to miss out on the most important thing. And you may ask, why? Why don't we do this? Because we're often distracted from the very best. Now, as most of you know, my family and I, we had an opportunity to go on vacation a couple of weeks ago. And I am the type of person that I want to know that I've done everything that I can do to take care of my portion of responsibility. And so the week before, the week leading up to our vacation, you know, I overworked. I put in way too many hours. I want to make sure every I was dotted and every T was crossed. I stayed here after Wednesday night service till very, very late, making sure I got everything done. Because I didn't, I didn't want to leave Pastor Andy and Pastor Ryan. I didn't want to leave Wendy things that I should have taken care of. And so the thought was, the intention was, was that when I left here Wednesday night, then I wasn't going to think about work church ministry I was going to go on vacation with my family we was going to enjoy this moment and this time so we left out early the next morning we traveled to Daytona uh, went to a place that uh, that I haven't been in a very very long time I was able to share a lot of really great childhood moments and stories with my children uh, because it was just a you know going back that was one of the highlights of of my childhood is going to Daytona and so we get there, we finally get to our room, we get our luggage kind of in place, and I'm exhausted. I'm tired from the trip, you know, I've worked hard all week, I'm tired. And so I lay back on the bed, and, and I'm just, you know, kind of, you know, smelling the room, and everything smells like Clorox, and everything is clean, and, you know, we're, we've arrived to this place, 
And I want to give you one guess to what I did next. Now, some of you, the romantics in the house, you're like, oh, I know what you did. You grabbed Kelly up in your arms and you gave her a big kiss and said, oh, I'm so glad to be with you on vacation. No, some of you say, oh, you grabbed your kids up. Like, oh, this means so much to me that I am with you during this moment. That's not what I did. I pulled out my phone, opened up my emails to see if just maybe there was something that the pastor needed to address, something I needed to do. Now, I don't know how it is for you, but in our home, it seems like that God, God puts the certain children with certain type personalities in place for a certain reason. And so I am, I'm reading my emails, and I feel someone staring at me. I mean, pointed little eyes. And so I lower my phone, and I look down, and there is Anna, my daughter of passion and zeal, with her hand on her hip, just like her mama. And she said, I thought you were on vacation. I thought you weren't going to work this week. I'm going to tell you, the Holy Spirit pierced my heart. And he said, Mark, your family is not your distraction. Right now, your work is your distraction. And I put my phone down, and I did not open it up. I, 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 before God is my witness, I did not open my phone until everybody had gone to sleep. So everybody was, was, was tucked quietly in, lights are out. I pulled the sheet up and I'm, you know, scrolling through. Pastor Ron, what's going on? Nobody, nobody's, nobody's texting me. What's wrong? I know you need me. I get lost in it sometimes myself <laughs> but it's real it's 100% truth you see for so many of us church we, we, we are at a place that we are so consumed we're obsessed even for some of us and this is a very very sharp word some of us are even possessed with accomplishing the urgent doing things that we think are the most important but when at the end of the day, guess what? They're not that important. A lot of times we fall into, into this, this idea and this thought that we will choose to do the lesser and miss the most important things that God has placed in, in front of us. Now Mary and Martha, they, they're viewing this visit from Jesus from completely two different perspectives. And in the middle of verse number 40, Martha runs up to Jesus and listen to what she says. Lord, do you not care? Do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Do you not care that I'm doing all this work by myself? Therefore, tell her to help me. Come on, Jesus, do something about this. Now, what is funny to me is that Martha is 100% convinced that what she is doing is correct, that what she is doing is what she should be doing. From her perspective, this was important. But yet Mary, on the other hand, she's just some lazy bum over there not doing anything. And says, Jesus, I need you to intervene here. Tell her to get to work. Tell her to quit being so lazy. Now, I realize that the challenge that I'm going to face in sharing this message today and wherever God leads us forward within this particular topic is that there are many of you, you are 100% convinced that how you are living is needed and it's what you need to be doing. That you are totally convinced that what you were doing is spot on. For many of you, you have bought into the lie that living life in the fast lane is somehow it's normal. You may think busyness will lead you to success. But I'm convinced everything within me is that for many of us that we are driving as hard as we possibly can because we think that somehow we are going to create within us. We're going to be all that God wants us to be based upon what we do, by our actions, by what we have to do about it. But listen, I pray that the Holy Spirit, I pray that you will allow Him today to open up your eyes, allow you to see the truth that God is saying that this is not His plan for you. 
how you are functioning, how you are operating, the pace that you're trying to keep up is not what God is wanting for you to do. See, what I'm going to talk about over the, today and for the next few weeks, for some of you, this is going to rock your world. For some of you, you're going to be like, I've, I've never seen it like this before. God, what have I been doing? God, I've been missing you. I've been doing all of these things, you know, in the name of Jesus. But you're going to recognize that you're living in the danger zone. You're, you're going to see that you're living life on the red line, and it's a dangerous place to be. Some of you are going to make a radical, life-changing decision that you're going to move out of the fast lane and you're going to do something different. I often say this a lot. You say that you want something to be different. You've got to choose to do something different. You've got a part to play in this whole thing. And listen, Jesus' response to you and how you're living may be much how he responded to Martha. I want you to pick the story back up with me, verse 41 and 42. Notice what Jesus says. Martha, Martha. I mean, can you see, can you hear how loving he is? How gentle he is with her? Martha, Martha. You are worried, you're troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. But Mary has chosen to do a good part, which will not be taken away from her. In other words, what she is doing is what she needs to be doing. Sitting at my feet. And being with me. Now the hard truth is this. The choice is yours today. The choice is going to be yours. If you think that living life in the fast lane. If you think that this is normal and it is okay. And I already know that there are a few of you. That you're going to face the temptation to push back upon this message. And some of you are going to say. Pastor Mark you don't know what you're talking about. You don't have any experience in this. You don't know what stress is. You don't know what work is. After all, you only work one hour a week. How hard can this possibly be? This is so easy for you. You don't know what I face and what I go through. And listen, I want to that criticism. But God kind of pierced my heart last night, and this is what he said to me. Mark, you don't know what this congregation is facing. You don't know exactly what their story is and the hardships that you face every single day. So I'm not going to demean any of what you're facing because it is real. The struggle is real. But what I do know is that the choice is yours on how you're going to respond to God's Word. The choice is yours. Or are you going to choose to do something different? Or are you going to, go, are you going to leave this place and go, okay, yeah, that was a good point. Yeah, that was some valid ideas and thoughts that was said today. But yet you go back doing the same thing over and over again. Listen, I, I quote this a lot. The definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over again, but yet expect different results. But yeah, I'm afraid that this is where even we as Christians, even as a church, I believe that we've fallen into this. Now, real quick, I want to move along. I want to give you some practical thoughts of what's going to happen if you continue to live life in the fast lane, if you continue to live your life marginless, if you continue to live a marginless life. So what happens when margin decreases? If you're a note taker, I want to encourage you to write this down. When margin decreases, your stress increases. Now I realize this is a very, very simple statement, but how true that it is. When you are running late, your margin decreases, so by default, stress comes in. Now, this is what I know for some of you here today. We had about like three people when church started this morning here in this auditorium, but somewhere along the way, you came. So what that tells me is, is that some of you were pushing it late. It tells me that, that someone within your relationship caused you to be a little bit late. No, don't, don't elbow nobody. That's not where I'm going with this. So there are some of you, you came in this morning. I know we only sang two songs which was because this was vital and important. Part of our worship experience was to lift up our kids and administrators and teachers and, and all the students. Very, very important to who we are and where we're going as a church. But there are some of you, as the worship team was leading and taking us in, some of you, you got nothing out of that whole entire worship experience because you're so frustrated about being late. 
For some of you, you are so frustrated right now. Your blood pressure is so on edge right now. You're literally about to explode. And you're not hearing a word that I'm saying. You see my mouth move and it's just blah, 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 blah. And you think that I'm exaggerating here. I'm not. We live this every single Sunday. I come into this church on two wheels every single Sunday. Y'all don't see it because I park way out there. <laughs> Y'all don't see the dust and the gravel and getting out of my Jeep, spitting. I'm exaggerating. No, I'm not. But same is true from a financial perspective. When margin decreases... What do you think is going to happen to your marriage? When financial margin decreases, what's going to happen? You're going to be pushed. And you're either going to bend or you're going to break. Some of the sound bites may sound something like this. You spent that much on that? Or maybe something breaks in the home. Maybe something breaks in the car. So you have this frustrating conversation. How in the world are we going to afford to fix that? How are we going to do these things? So financial margin, when it decreases, stress increases. As margin decreases, number two, as margin decreases, your relational intimacy will also decrease. The unfortunate thing is we see this all the time. But there are people who, they are so busy, they're so frustrated, they are so challenged within life. It could be that for you, maybe your mind rarely disengages. That you're always in your mind, always hammered down about that next thing, whether it's work or, or schedule or, or that thing. You could be with somebody that's very special to you. You could be with your spouse or your children, but yet your mind is somewhere else. You're there, but you're not there. You're physically there, but you're not there. You're on vacation, but you're not on vacation because you've got something going on within your mind. Now, going back to our vacation the other day... Uh, my family and I, we, we, one of the great things I love about vacation is you go and you eat. You eat it at new places. I didn't say you would eat new things, but you would eat at new places. <laughs> and I, I love that. I love to eat different cheeseburgers at different places. <laughs> it's great. So we went to all these great places, spent a whole lot of money that we should not have on food on this vacation. But the greatest meal that we had was that steak and shake. I'm not here to advocate. I'm not here to, to, to solicit Steak and Shake. But if you've ever been to Steak and Shake, you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's, a, it's a positive environment. You know, checkerboard floors, you know, red walls. It's that 50, 60 diner look. It's, you know, they've got music playing. Everybody is happy and smiling. And, you know, pe the, the workers got these little, you know, paper hats on. I mean, it's just cute. It's fun. So we're eating these greasy cheeseburgers, which are awesome. The great, great French fries were awesome. And, you know, drinking these milkshakes that were awesome. And it was probably our, one of our greatest highlights of our vacation. And I know it's, it's kind of sad that that was our <laughs> highlight of our vacation. But, you know, we're sitting there. We're, we're enjoying each other. The kids are happy. We're eating. It's happy. It's a good moment. But Kelly and I, we noticed that there's this couple sitting kind of behind us. And they're on some type of mobile device the entire time not one conversation came out of their mouth the entire time now I don't know what they were doing they may have been on Facebook, Instagram they may have been emailing, may have been work related I don't know now listen church, there are times that emergencies arise there are times that we have to do things that may be in moments that we would rather not do life happens and you sometimes have to address that that is not what I'm saying here but you can't tell me that this couple could not have put that mobile device down for just a few minutes and just had some kind of conversation. It didn't have to be anything deep. It could have been, wow, look at those dark clouds. It's about to rain. Look across the street. There's a Krispy Kreme donut shop. <laughs> now, you want to talk about healing your marriage and your relationship? Talk about that. <laughs> Glory, it'll change you. So... This couple, they got up to leave. And, and I watched them. And I, I, I love to observe people. And I'm looking at them. And they're, they're so, they, they look so unhappy and depressed, unhealthy. 
Now you may say, oh, Pastor Mark, you're being all judgmental. No, 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 look, I, I wasn't judging them. I don't know where they are within life, but I do know that the, the Word says to judge a tree by its fruit. And there was no good fruit coming forth out of that relationship. So it, didn't, it doesn't take a spiritual rocket scientist to determine something is missing here. Now, I'm not saying that God gave me spiritual discernment about this couple, and maybe I should have went and intervened, and they would have just told me to get out of their business, and it was none of my business. But something was missing here. Something is wrong within that story. And it really, it bothered me to no end. But listen, I don't believe this is where God wants us to live. This is not where God wants us to be. This is not God's plan for our life. But the fact is, is that this isn't just limited to our relationships with people. This often is how our relationship with God looks like. Oftentimes that we are so hammered down about all of the things that we're doing that we miss the most important thing in our life, and that is a relationship with our Heavenly Father. It can happen with our relationship with God. You see, the one of the things I love about living in this community, and I think it's the greatest place on earth to live, I, was, I, 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 I know that it is a blessing that God has allowed me to grow up in this community and be a part of this community. So honestly, I can't go anywhere, whether it's the grocery store, post office, restaurant. I'm going to see someone that I know. And I want to see people that I go to church with. I'm going to see people maybe that I used to go to church with. I want to see people that I know that they, they attend another church or I assume that they're attending another church. And you know how small talk can be. How are you doing? How are things going? And they're like, oh, you know, it's just been, life's been, been hard. And, and I'll always kind of throw in, hey, well, you know, how's church going? How's ministry going? How's your pastor doing? Whatever the conversation is. In almost every response, when things are kind of hard and difficult, you know what they'll say? Oh, we've been so busy, I haven't been able, had time to go to church. But then the very next statement will be, they'll share about something significant, hard that they're going through. Now, as a pastor, I don't understand this. I don't understand that when, when, when life gets busy and life gets hard, we tend to run away from God rather than running to Him. Rather than coming together in a corporate place of worship, we want to find solitude we want to be all by ourselves. so we're at a place in life that we're too busy to connect with people and we're too busy to have a relationship with God and the sixth thing is this we call this normal we call that this is normal life but the hard question that I have for you this morning I promise you I'm, I'm going to lay in this thing as quick as I can the hard question I have for you is why is it that we say that we're going to make plans and we're going to slow down one day soon. We're going to do things different one day soon, but that one day soon never happens. Why is it that, that we refuse to buy the house that we can't afford, sell the house that we can't, downsize, live within our means? Why is it that we, that we refuse to find financial margin? Why is this such a challenge for us? Why is it that we don't cut back on our schedules so that we can spend more time with our kids and our spouse, with our grandkids? And I believe that the hard truth is this. The bottom line is, is that I, I'm not sure that it's because we don't trust God. That it all comes down to that somewhere along the, the way that we don't have enough faith that God has all the details already worked out. So we think somehow that we got to help God along. We've got to help that process. For many of us, we bought into the lie that, that uh, you know, if, if we don't go and go and go and go, then somehow we're going to miss out on something. That we bought into this lie that, that somehow that, that we have these voids within our lives and we think that, well, if I don't pursue, then I could miss out. Or that, that thing, my answer might evade me that I can't ever obtain it. So I've got to continue to go and go and work. So what do we do? We work harder. We try to make more money. We want nicer things. Or for some of us, we go from one meeting to the next meeting to the next meeting because somewhere we want somebody to accept us for us. We want to be somebody in the eyes of somebody else. But I want you to listen to me very clearly, church. I don't believe that this is God's plan for your life. Nowhere within Scripture do I see that Jesus ever says that this is how you need to live. 
In fact, Psalms chapter 46, and I quote this passage a lot. Psalms 46, 10, 11. This is God speaking. He says, Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Now, real quick, what, what, what's God saying here? He's saying you need to stop. You need to be still, and you need to exalt, and you need to worship me. That's what God's saying here. He said that if you will, if you will stop, get out of the fast lane, then I will be your refuge. Now, we know the definition of refuge can be defined as something as being a safe place. But I want to dig a little bit deeper as it applies to this message today. I believe that God is the God of margin, and I believe God is saying, I will give you margin if you will stop, if you will be still, if you will worship me. I will teach you how to live within margin. Now listen, I don't know what the Holy Spirit is specifically telling you today to do. I have no idea. This is a very, very personal conversation between you and God right now. For some of you, it could be that the Holy Spirit is saying, hey, he wants more time with you. Maybe time in prayer. Maybe time in reading your word. For some of you, maybe, maybe God's saying, hey, you need to get more involved in a corporate setting. You need to be a part of the body of Christ and live life together. For some of you, it could be that God is saying to you, you need to set aside five minutes of just having a conversation with your spouse. Turn the TV off. Listen, guys, we can't focus on more than one thing at a time. Women, they can, go, they can go down the road. They can fix their hair, put makeup on, you know, clean the kids, fix their hair, feed them, feed the baby, do all this while driving, texting and calling and all of these things. Women can handle it. But I had a conversation with a precious couple in the back this morning. I said, Look, you know, I'm, I, I may, this may be my first time meeting you. I don't know. You have to forgive me. I've got ADHD or something. I can't focus on nothing. And about the time I said that, another guy walked by and it was Squirrel. And I was like, oh, what were we talking about? That's embarrassing. But I think that I'm in the same vein of most of you men. You need to stop the distractions. You need to focus on your marriage. You need to focus on your spouse. You need to focus on your kids. You need to focus on what's most important. You see, if you will stop living according to the speed and the pace that God has you on, but instead that you will live according to the rhythms of God's grace, you will be changed. You will be transformed. Now listen, today is just a launching pad for where God has for us. And I really, I can't think of a better topic. This is something that I have been researching and chewing on, praying for the right time to preach this message for about two years. I've been working and saying, God, when can, I, when can I preach this? When can I share this? And I believe that God is saying, now's the time. Going into this season, new school year, new opportunities of everything that is coming before us. There are going to be some good things that are going to be presented before us. But I want to encourage you, don't miss out on the best thing, and that is your relationship with Jesus. If you're here today and you want something to be different, then you've got to choose to do something different. And I believe it starts right here, right now. Would you bow your heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we come before you. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your word. God, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. I don't take it lightly. God, I know that you have placed us here for this moment. August 4th, 2019 is going to be a changing moment for so many people who are here now and those who are watching this service live stream. That, Holy Spirit, I pray you would work upon our hearts. And, God, that we would say, okay, God, you're right. Something's got to change. Something's got to be different. God, I pray right now that, that as you were working on our hearts, that, you were, that you're ministering and you were given the application of what margin means for each individual, that it's time to establish it. God, I know that life is hard. I know that life is real. And God, it can be overwhelming most of the time. But God, I pray that we would learn to do just what you commanded us to do, to be still, to know that you were God, to exalt you, to worship you, to know that you are the God of this church, the God of this community, the God of this nation. And God, that we can know that there is safety and there's refuge, there's margin within you. Lord, I pray as we move forward, Lord, that you would be exalted in everything we do and say. In Jesus' name we pray.
amen and amen. I want to ask if you would stand with me across the congregation. This morning, if you need margin, you need help living within margin, listen, the Lord has your answer. So as we open these altars up, as the worship team sings, we want to invite you to come to these altars. We've got a, a group of prayer warriors who they are ready to pray with you, to pray through whatever it is that you stand in need of. But you have a choice today. Be obedient what God has placed upon your heart to do. Oh 